All right. Well, hello and welcome, Trojans. I hope the semester is treating you well. I know this is kind of a unique uh, way to start the spring semester, but we certainly do appreciate you joining us for today's session. Specifically, we're going to be talking about interacting with alums through the Trojan Network. And my name is Lauren Opgenorth. My pronouns are she, her, and hers. And I am the Associate Director of Internship Engagement at the USC Career Center. Also with me today, I have two of my colleagues who I want to introduce to you. I'm going to let them actually do their own introductions so they can share a little bit about who they are, their pronouns, and their role here at the Career Center. So with Malika, you could go first and then pass it along to Giselle. That would be wonderful. Awesome. So hi, everybody. So excited to have you all here on this webinar. My name is Malika Samtani. My pronouns are she, her, hers. And I'm the advisor of internship and diversity programs at the USC Career Center. The reason why this presentation is so important to the work I do is because I oversee a mentorship program through the Trojan Network for first-generation students. So if you identify as a first-generation student and you're an undergrad, maybe next year, consider signing up for the first-generation mentor program. We pair you with an alum of the university who also identifies as first-gen. And I'll pass it on to Giselle. Hi, everyone. Welcome. My name is Giselle Jose. My pronouns are she, her, hers. And I'm the Mentorship and Alumni Engagement Coordinator at the USC Career Center. And my role will really focus on helping um, provide resources for all of you when it comes to networking, mentorship, and utilizing the Trojan Network. So, so excited that you're all here today. Great. Thank you so much to the two of you. I'm really excited that they can be on today's call, but also they will be assisting and managing the Q&A in the chat. So as different websites become available and we need to share that information, uh, they will certainly be my additional hand. So thank you very much. But as mentioned, we're so excited to be speaking with you because this topic is very, very important and really does speak to the success of the Trojan family. You hear about this family, this Trojan network, and just wanted to share a little bit more about that. But before we get started, I wanted to let you know that for the next 40 to 45 minutes, what it is you can anticipate, I'm going to review the general topic of networking because it can be uh, a little bit hard to uh, digest and then actually uh, show you how to register for our Trojan Network and then dive deep into the platform to see all of its different opportunities and would certainly encourage you to follow along. So if you want to go ahead and do so, please feel free to join us. But what I first want to do is I'm going to go ahead and uh, jump into our PowerPoint and share the screen. Give me one. Oh, no, stop sharing there. That's not the one I wanted. Don't you love that? All right. So let's see. I need to There we go. I've got it now. Thank you for your patience. Hopefully you are able to see. All right, great. So here's my opening slide, but certainly what I first wanna to try to do is really define networking and its intent because sometimes it does get a little bit of a stigma um, since it feels like maybe you are asking for something or you're gonna put someone out or put them in an awkward position. But really how we see networking is a way of connecting or reconnecting with maybe those you haven't been interacting with. And I know that in this virtual space, things have been a little bit different. And with classes, there's now ways to interact through different breakout rooms or uh, as staff and faculty, we certainly try to tell students to take advantage of that opportunity and speaking with one another. Um, but we really want you to try to think about extending that, extending yourself and really think about that purpose. So it really is trying to develop that rapport and ultimately try to create that foundation. So when you do dive into a little bit deeper questions, you can learn more from others who are actually in those roles doing that work that really is a benefit. So um, something that I always say is, you know, now that you understand its purpose and really treat it more as connecting and building those connections, we really wanna to try to emphasize those benefits because that's where students can ultimately take advantage of this Trojan network. And so I'm gonna go through each of these bullet points, but really we want you to try to gain advice uh, about a per, or potential industry. Right now, you're all studying a particular field through an academic unit. And when you're able to actually speak to someone who's living the day-to-day -day, um, or they've been doing this for a number of years, how they've been able to work their way up through the ranks, 
that's where you're able to really make the most of these connections and how they've been able to you know work within the virtual world how they have been able uh, to think of how they've been able to advance in their career these are all the things that you can certainly gain from networking also i want you to be able to learn career knowledge about the field Sure, you can ask people, you know, follow up questions, but when you have the chance to sit down or virtually speak to someone for a 15 or 20 minute period, they might be able to give you perspective on the industry for the last few months, last several years, and really give you a better snapshot of what it is like to work in that particular field. They can tell you about some of the adjustments that they've had to make, maybe tell you about their professional development opportunities or ways that they've had to learn. And wouldn't it be great to learn directly from someone who's in that particular experience. Also, want you to, uh, you know, certainly as a staff member at the Career Center, we're always trying to recommend that idea of informational interviewing in order to learn more about career paths. Um, but it's also to learn a little bit more about the projects, to ask what they enjoy most about the job. What have been some of the challenges that they've had to face as they've continued to, to move along? What are the different rewards in the field? And really by trying to connect with at least one person, if not maybe two people a month, is something that you can certainly schedule. Now I know for some of you, you're probably thinking there's a lot that's going on right now and I absolutely recognize that. Um, but I typically try to tell students, even just to get started, think about trying to connect with maybe one person a month or one person every couple months. Um, you know, Even if you try to connect with two people each semester who could help to share this insight, that would be a wonderful start. Because the idea is, you know, you hear this idea of informational interview and automatically you think, oh my gosh, I'm applying for something. You're, you're doing just that. You're trying to get information. It's just seeking information from a person who is experiencing that particular career path. And so you're trying to get some insight um, into that inner circle as far as what things look like. I know right now during uh, the pandemic, there's a lot of questions that people have about what is the culture like? What is you know, the work look like? Is it in-person? Is it virtual? Is it hybrid? How do you balance all that? The people who are living it and breathing it day to day, these are the people that can help you. And if you're thinking, well, these people are so busy, are they gonna have time for me? That is ultimately this purpose of this Trojan network. So we certainly are gonna show you how to identify those people and go through that, but really want you to understand that some of this does come from your ability to kind of step outside your comfort zone and to think about conducting these informational interviews on an ongoing basis. Um, so we definitely want to encourage you to think about some of these questions that you would try to ask someone. Typically in the informational interview, these are the questions you wouldn't ask in the job interview. They're in the other questions of like, um, they're, you know, they're not focused on the, the job or the organization, but more about the culture or how they've been able to work through different challenges or obstacles or, or things like that. So again, purely informational to get a little bit more of those nitty gritty details. And then uh, certainly the last piece is to access to the alumni mentorship network or mentorship. And as Malika mentioned, we do have an amazing first generation mentor program. These are all individuals that can offer their own perspective and share new skills and even give some advice of how you might want to overcome weaknesses. I know no one necessarily wants to be able to share like, this is what my weakness is and I'm trying to overcome it, but we're all works in progress. We're all believing in this concept of lifelong learning and what can we do to really um, gain some valuable insight through these mentorships. So I would suggest first thinking about maybe connecting with either your academic advisor and ask them if there are any departmental opportunities for mentorship, because there are some that are done at the academic level, uh, but there's also a lot of other different campus resources. I know with some of the different clubs and organizations, it's a great way to gain that insight. Um, so that could certainly be a way. But you know, you yourself, you know your background, you know your interests, but it's your mentor that can give you more advice or perspective on how to apply yourself in these roles. And what can you do to make those strengths stand out You know, when you are um, up for a different job or you've got different uh, candidates all there with you. So uh, what we really wanna do is make sure that through mentorship, you're getting that opportunity not only to gain new skills and insight, but to overcome those weaknesses and really to help strengthen and value the degree that you have here. And then to accomplish this, there are certainly two resources. One of them you're probably well aware of and maybe you have in a profile, but um, we certainly do wanna recommend that, uh, that LinkedIn is a great valuable tool. Um, certainly, I, 
I have a LinkedIn account. I encourage others to utilize it, but sometimes it could be a little bit daunting because of the nearly 450,000 USC alums that are out there, nearly 350,000 of them are on LinkedIn. And that could be an overwhelming number. And you never know necessarily why people have been utilizing LinkedIn. Is it maybe for their own benefit? Are they willing to help others? What's great about the Trojan Network, our specific platform that I'm going to be showing you, this is a platform that is going to, this, this is a platform where alums have volunteered to share their time and expertise to really indicate what is it that they're willing to help with in particular job topics and things like that. So I know there's a couple chat features, so I'll let them let you handle that. But in the meantime, um, what I want to say is that as a result, and really what happened, uh, you know, really in 2020 is USC implemented this virtual platform to connect with USC alumni who really want to help you with your career. They want to provide career and industry insight, and they want to make connections, you know, 24 seven around the globe. So you've certainly made the right decision to attend USC, and I would certainly want to remind you that the Trojan family is one of the world's most powerful networks because alumni, they want to pay it forward. For a lot of people, they know that there was someone who helped them get to where they are, and now they want to give that back, but also they want to provide that industry insight. They want to be able to share advice and really help support members. So now that we've done this you know, basic brief PowerPoint here, what I want to do is actually jump into the live session. So I'm going to go ahead and stop sharing specifically, or I'm actually going to continue on with the PowerPoint to show you how you would be logging in as a student in particular. So what you're going to do is first go to our website. For those of you who are returning students, you might have noticed that our website has gotten a, a fresh look. And with that, there's a little bit different uh, point of entry. But to go to our website, you just go to careers.usc.edu. Um, and the general website is going to come up with a prompt. But really, the easiest way is to go to this little magnifying glass and either type in Trojan Network or if you just go to careers.usc.edu and select people, this is where you're gonna then see information about the Trojan Network. It breaks it down for the benefits for alums or students, and you're then gonna to wanna to do sign up for the Trojan Network. By selecting that, it's gonna prompt you to the sign in page. As a student, please select the join the Trojan Network page. Next, you're gonna to wanna to select USC NetID students. A lot of times students say, no, I wanna select through LinkedIn, Facebook, or otherwise. It is in your best interest to go through the student tab because it's going to give you automatic access. It's going to allow you to not have to input as many details and it's going to just simplify that process. So we're all trying to save you time here. So you're going to log in then through that. You'll be required to type in your USC credentials and then, and I know it seems like a lot of steps, but when you're going through and in click, click, clicking, it does go by very quickly. Next up, this is where you're going to be able to add these personal details. Something to mention here is that there is the headline in the location. I really want you to be able to think about how you want to market yourself. Please put up a professional photo. There's nothing worse than just seeing this little outline. Isn't it nice to see someone's, you know, presentation? Definitely make sure you have a professional photo, though. Um, there's a headshot event that will be happening just before um, the career fair in February. So definitely be sure to check that out. Um, but also in thinking about your headline, you don't want to be one of the 47,000 students at USC. You want to think, what is it that you're known for? What can you offer or how can you show that credibility? So that's something to think about. And then for your location, it is pulled from Google. So I would suggest including the major city as opposed to a neighborhood. For instance, we had someone who said, oh, I'm from Chatsworth, California. And while that's a neighborhood and that's very, very specific, we want to make sure that you're going to get the best opportunity to connect with as many alums as possible. So that's something to think about. Once we've done those basic personal details, there's a few other pieces we want you to share. What does your involvement look like? And while we know some of you might be new transfers or just getting started, we really want you to take this seriously because the answers are going to help connect you with other people. So if, you, if this is your first semester, as far as different clubs and extracurriculars, you'll be able to get involved with the uh, upcoming involvement fair, but maybe for some of your past club experience or otherwise, you can type in that content. So whether it's clubs or organizations, maybe it's some of your um, different communities or identities, be sure to include that. 
And then the last piece is going to be this professional responsibility agreement. And this is something that I do mention just because we do want you to read the entire agreement. We want to make sure that you are using your best judgment when working with alumni. You know, you're not going to be asking for jobs. We want you to truly be intentional and you should not be using this for just personal purposes. So meaning this is for networking specifically. So if you do agree to that, then this is what you're going to be prompted to, it's then going to be the home screen. Now, for the purposes of our presentation, I want to make sure you can see the live screen action. So I'm going to go ahead and stop sharing real quick, just so I can then switch over to the live page. For those of you who are new to this platform, you might see a few new additional features. So just bear with me now as I go in and share my screen again. All right. Hopefully you see my screen. So when I've logged in, it's gonna prompt you to this homepage. This is what I call the dashboard. This is really where you're gonna have a snapshot of absolutely everything on the platform. So first, not only are you gonna be able to see the Trojan Network community is here to help you, and here's this matching quiz. Again, when you filled out the, the different uh, personal details, it is going to then identify so a five different matches. Who are your top five matches based on how you answered it? So that's based on the city that you indicated, what are some of your extracurriculars, as well as the industry. And then those five options will come up here. What's nice is that you can choose to message them directly. You can filter through the different individuals. You can bookmark them. If you don't agree with the match, you can remove the match. And just know that you can always go back to improving these recommendations with the matching quiz. Now, for those of you who might be thinking, you know what, I'm a senior, I'm about to graduate in May 2022, I already want to get started on the, I want to log in as an alum, and I want to kind of move forward with that. It's really in your best interest to still sign in as a student because this matching quiz is only available to students. Um, also, if students want to connect with other students, um, it's only through the student platform that you're able to do so. So those are a couple of the added perks that we certainly do want to mention. Something that you'll notice also on this home screen, you are able to do some video introductions. So I know that everyone loves social media and YouTube and getting those quick snapshots. If that's something that you're interested in, you can absolutely give that video intro, something that we've seen updated within the last few months. But this is really where you're going to see all the different types of activities. If you're trying to nurture your connections and see what that looks like, here's the quick snapshot there. Also, for some of the different jobs that have been pulled from Connect SC or the Handshake platforms, they will be listed here. We have projects which are alumni based opportunities, and I'll show you where you can get that, as well as our discussion board posts, which I will discuss. And since January is National Mentoring Month, there's a lot of great discussion that's going on there. So if you're curious to learn from maybe the alumni perspective, what they think of mentorships or the value, um, or if you want a little bit more insight into that, we'll certainly search that. But for the purpose of, of our connections, you can see that there's been messages that have been spent that have been sent back and forth, and they're all managed underneath this envelope here. Certainly, there's a lot of different features, whether you need to whether you need tech support or you want to see about any sort of notifications or reminders. Really, the one that you're going to be utilizing for most interactions is going to be this inbox. When you select it, it's going to show you not only your active, but also your archived messages. So even if you've decided, you know what, that conversation is complete, I don't need to be going back and forth, you can archive it, but there is always a copy there. But what's really nice is that for each of these individual messages, not only does it give you the opportunity to then say, I'd like to schedule a meeting, I want to handle a phone call or a video call, or then these three dots allow you to manage the conversation and then be able to archive it directly. So that's a really great feature. And what's nice is that, as you can see, since everything is managed right within this platform, there's no exchange of email addresses or phone numbers or anything like that. So it keeps it all relatively safe for students and alums to interact without it being you know, too overwhelming. So definitely something to consider. All right. Well, now that I've spoken a lot about those specific features, I want to get back to the home page and then explain a little bit more about each of these tabs. So probably where you're going to be spending a majority of your time is going to be under networking, because now that you know its purpose and its benefits, you want to try to see what other Trojan is out there and going to help you in making those connections. So what you'll see kind of at first glance are these active users. 
Right now, there are over 11,000 alums who have, again, volunteered to share their advice, to connect with students, to really help with this Trojan family concept of networking. And so you're thinking, wow, that's great. I love to see it. Now, how do I get involved with them? You'll notice that also 156 of them are currently online. That's noted by this green dot, or sometimes you might see a green, or it's a white dot with the green outline. Um, this is showing they're online now, or there's one that'll sometimes say they were on recently. So there's still that opportunity. If you decided that you wanted to try to connect with them, you could literally do chat now. And then that same dialogue box that we saw within the envelope, it would show and it, you could have um, a correspondence back and forth. It's a really great way to start the conversation. And there is a prompt that'll help you to say, you know, in this case, it would say, hi, Paul, you know, do you have a minute to chat? I see that you're online now. And if they're thinking, yes, I have the time and that's exactly why I'm on this platform, that's exactly what you're able to do. So that's really, really exciting. Again, these are all people that want to connect by industry. You can see that there's even by, you know, company. They want to give you some advice and to really help you build your professional platform. What you notice is that, so this... This is gonna list all the people that are online now or recently online, but it also then pulls from people who have experience in, because in my profile, I've indicated both business, international business and higher education. These are all the different industries it's gonna pull candidates. Just know that in this case, it's gonna give you a quick little snapshot. If I wanted to learn a little bit more about any of these individuals, I could click on it. And much like a LinkedIn profile, I can then see, well, when did they graduate? where are they located, what is their field. Um, here are some of the things that we have both in common, business. Um, it also makes some other recommendations of individuals that I might wanna seek out as well. But what's wonderful is that they do include their professional experience. On the alumni side, so many of them are gonna pull the content from LinkedIn so that you can then get that quick snapshot of what is their expertise? What is their education? What is it they're happy to help with? Yes, in the case I indicated business, but they also have interest in the industries of accounting and international business. In this case, they haven't indicated any other clubs or other identity groups, but that's fine. But if I wanted to then, you know, message Michael, I could certainly go ahead and do so. Um, but first, what I want to try to do is give you a little bit more insight. You know, now that I did that one specific example of how you can connect with someone, basically for every single alum on the, on the platform, they've had to indicate what it is they're happy to help with. So this is a filter that I think is extremely important to students, and it definitely varies over the course of your own career development. So maybe right as you're trying to, you know, get acclimated to USC, you're trying to figure out how is it that you can take advantage of your time in school? Do I need to get involved? Do I need to talk to my professors during office hours? Should I think about um, a gap year before graduate school? There's a lot of different topics here, but you know, whether it's on career trends and industries, maybe some mock interviews or informational interviews. Uh, maybe you want to take a look at um, transitioning to life after school because you're about to graduate. Whatever that topic may be, you can search for it and then apply. We also have a drop down list of different industries. We have created a pretty extensive list here um, that's listed alphabetically, but we recognize it's not you know, all, in, uh, all encompassing. So if there's a particular industry you want to type in, you can certainly search by that. There's also the ability to search by company and you can see if whether or not they are currently working there. We always have students who come in with, you know, we want to see who's working at the Amazons and Googles and all the, you know, Fortune 100 organizations. Please feel free to search by that feature. But there's also a very long list of other ways that you can identify different uh, potential mentors by location. Again, it's looking at it uh, by Google records. So don't do neighborhoods. By different schools. Sometimes you might be thinking, you know what, I'd love to learn a little bit more about what it's like within the division of biokinesiology or versus the Bovard College versus the Kaufman School of Dance. You can certainly search by over 20 different schools. Also by degree types. As people are thinking about changing majors or going to graduate school, it's really important to be able to search by those different types. There are quite a few of them, so just be sure that you are taking a, a close eye of what that does look like. We also have majors being open-ended. With over 150 different majors, we did not want to have a drop-down that would be limiting. So certainly you can search by those features. 
And then communities. This is probably one of my favorites because it does allow the different identity groups to focus on different uh, populations here at the university. Certainly with nearly 24% of our students being first generation, we know that that's something that's very important and something that um, Malika works with specifically, but we do also have other identity groups listed there. So you can certainly find uh, a great community within any of these. Building off of that, we also most recently have added our residential community. So this is actually something that we added in 2020 when it went to a completely remote um, academic year. And we wanted to make sure that students were still able to meet with one another and learn where they were living. And while there were some students who were on campus, we wanted to try to build that sense of community or even for students who maybe they started off, you know, their first year fall semester on campus and then by spring semester they then had to move home but um, or move elsewhere and wanted to think about well who was in my residential community and what did that look like here's a great way to find those individuals. And then last but certainly not least the different clubs, so these would then be things tied to academic unit maybe extracurriculars intramurals all of the above there's a lot of different ways that you can go about that. So there's a lot of different filters. There's certainly um, a number of different ways that you can find someone from the 11,000 who you can try to certainly connect with. This is listed as the card view, but for those of you, I know there've been a couple people on the call who were specifically um, from out of the country. So this is always a fun way to then swap over to the map view. You know, one of our slogans is that Trojans are lifelong and worldwide, and this map shows you that definitely provides that visual. It is slowly but surely coming up and you can see that the numbers are starting to appear. And so this is showing where some of our hubs might be, specifically in the US, but I'm gonna pan out so that you can see what's going on. Look at, we've got over 60 in, uh, in Hawaii and we're gonna keep going to give you that world shot. This is probably one of my favorite views because you can see right now in Asia, Asia there's 186. In Europe, there's 108 specifically over here, but you can see that this number, and these are active users. So if you wanted to then switch it over to see online, that would then, you know, switch it up. But when we're really talking about, you know, where are alums located, you can see that there's a nice cross section. So that is our map view. You know, certainly you could spend your, your time, you know, even weekly going through this, trying to find new mentors, new individuals that you can connect with. But since we are constantly getting new mentors uh, who would like to help to share their insight, it's always great to set a search alert because this is a way that then if someone new comes to the platform, you can then receive alerts. So in my case, I've done a search alert on a monthly basis for anyone who's in LA with an education, I wanna know who they are. So I get a monthly update reminder who will then share this information. And then once I see that, I'm then able to connect with them saying, I saw that you're a new you know, alum willing to help out. Thank you so much for joining. And if it was something to where I saw they were happy to help out with a particular topic, I would then reach out to them and connect. So definitely consider setting up multiple uh, different alerts. It's something that is highly recommended. Um, and just another way, you know, we recognize you have a lot to work on, especially during the semester. This is a nice way to get that automatic reminder. So it's kind of out of sight, out of mind. All right. Now what I want to show you is going back to the networking piece. You know, we've been able to show you how to uh, find these alums, where you can get their information, but now you're probably thinking, okay, well, how do I connect? How do I actually initiate that conversation? You know, it's a little, it's one thing to go into the platform and to find them, but now I have to make the first step. Absolutely. You have to, you have to be very proactive. Um, and it definitely does take a, a little bit more, um, takes a little bit more on the student, but that's okay. So just for the purpose of a visual piece, I'm going to switch back to the card view. And again, you're going to have the choice of either chatting now or the let's connect. And this is, so we're gonna go past these online ones. And I'm gonna think, you know what? I wanna go, let's speak to Lauren. Love the name, I wanna try to connect. So here, not only does it give me a quick snapshot of her profile, so then it's not like, dear Lauren, where do I begin? We have actually created a number of templates to help you. So the templates that we have created thus far have been for networking, career exploration, and choosing a major. But since today's topic is all about how we can network with individuals, I'm going to select that. And what's wonderful is that there's already a little bit of an outline created. So 
in most basic terms, we've got the Hi, Lauren, would you mind sharing your thoughts on networking? I'm excited to learn what I can be doing to improve my networking experiences. Do you have any specific tips you might recommend? So this is kind of a very brief outline. And what you'll note in this little pop-up, it does say keep it short, but not too short. You know, maybe add a little bit more information about yourself. Maybe think about um, adding a little bit more detail. Like in this case, maybe you're a student who's thinking about pursuing law school and you might say, okay, well, I see that this is someone who they went to undergrad and graduated in 2014. They then went to, uh, they then went to law school and graduated in 2019. So it looks like they did take a couple years off. Did they take, did they have some work experience or what did they do during those gap years prior to going to graduate school? So would you mind sharing your thoughts on networking? I can see that you are now pursuing the field of law and I'd love to pick your brain about your experience in preparing for law school. I'm about to take the LSAT this summer and would love to spend 10 to 15 minutes to learn a little bit more about your experience. Right there, you will then hit between the 50 to 125 words, and there you have it. Um, probably one of my favorite features of this platform is that as you type different things, things will come up. Like if, if I see hay, I'm like, hay is what horses eat. Let's keep it to hi or dear or good morning or evening or some sort of greeting there. Um, but this certainly is gonna help provide you with a little bit more clear direction. Um, notice that I then say, if after this I say, I need a job, that's what it's going to say. We've noticed you've used the word job or internship. If you're looking for a job, don't ask for it. Be curious, ask great questions, and who knows what might happen as you build that rapport. That's the thing. It's going to say you have no foundation to just ask for something. That is not okay. Again, this platform, this Trojan network is for building those connections, um, learning a little bit more about their insight. It's not to be asking for opportunities. And I know you might be thinking, but Lauren on the dashboard, it talked about jobs and projects. That is a different tab. Right now we're under the networking tab. So it is very important that what you're trying to do is ask them to either set up some time for this uh, informational interview or to learn a little bit more about their own experience. So that certainly does help with that. Um, but just know that these pop-ups will continue to do so. But once it's reached a point where you're ready to send it, you click send. And again, you'll be able to see example an example of that specifically from your, yeah, I want to go back to the Explorer. You will then see that example specifically under the envelope feature. So that's how you would go about in that. Um, you know, this network tab is probably one of my favorites, but there are a few others that I certainly do want to share for the purposes of this discussion. So network, this is where alums are classmates. This is something that is only available to students. So on the platform, we we allow students to speak to one another through the, the classmates tab. Students can speak to alumni and alumni can speak to alums. So this classmate tab is exclusively for students, undergrad, grad, students um, across, you know, all different majors and disciplines. So just know that this is great. You might be thinking, um, you know, what happens when you do graduate? Pretty much after degrees have been conferred, we then will transfer students to alumni accounts. So there's not anything you have to do on your end. So in the meantime, take full advantage of your student access. But what you will notice is that there are the same filters. You can search by school, by major, by community. Some of the other features, you know, aren't necessary, but certainly for students who've had internships or maybe graduate students who've had part-time work, or maybe they've done gap years or maybe worked and then gone back to graduate school. That's why you can search them by industries, but it's really great to see also the residential communities and clubs listed there. Um, so that's what we have under classmates, same features and being able to chat now versus the let's connect. You can certainly see that. Moving right along to our programs. This is where we have our formalized mentor program. So um, as Malika had mentioned earlier, she does manage this first generation mentor program. Unfortunately, the application deadline has since closed. It is a year long program, but I, what I will do is for the purposes of this, I will click on it. Basically, we are, we are always recruiting students to participate in the beginning of the fall semester. We typically have a deadline of early September where students can then let us know why it is they wanna be a part of the program and then it lasts until April. It is a year long commitment um, and it's wonderful because not only does it pair you with a mentor, there's a discussion board, there's different resources. 
there's quite a lot that can happen from that. But since that one's not available at the moment, do want to let you know that there are a couple other mentor programs that are going on. Price, our Soul Price School does have their professional mentorship program. And then Dornsife has a couple programs that they are working on, specifically an all Dornsife program or one specifically for econ students. So definitely something to check out. I know that some of the other schools might have programs that are not necessarily on the Trojan network, but either your academic advisor or your department or your career center department would be able to share those features. But want to recognize that there are formalized programs that will help to walk you through this process. We also do have our discussion board. So as mentioned, this is something that we have been continuing to utilize over the last month. Giselle was wonderful to share January is National Mentoring Month, and there's so many different ways that you can work with alums who can really help to um, kind of guide you or give you a little bit more insight of what you can do while you're still in college to help prepare for that. And you can certainly see the different comments. It's been really rewarding to see how people have responded and someone who's been doing professional mentorship for 30 years. It really shows the, the experience and what it goes to. So definitely be sure to check that out. It's also all listed in reverse chronological order. So there are other opportunities. So um, as we're looking for people for different upcoming events, or if there's different activities that are happening, maybe through alumni um, affinity groups, this is where you're gonna be able to capture that information. You will be required to log onto the platform to, to see those discussion boards. So in addition to networking with individuals and, and uh, learning to see what's been posted, be sure to check that out. Um, also wanna to go to the resources. There are certainly a number of different resources here, kind of the bare bones, but we want to see all USC resources. This is where we've certainly, you know, tried to highlight different things of how do you build that relationship with a mentor? What are some of the do's and don'ts of virtual interviewing? I know two years ago, we didn't know necessarily what that looked like, but now we've become pretty good at it. Um, what are some, you know, networking tips when you don't have a large extensive network? You know, there's resources that we're continuing to update here. So be sure to check it out. Also, probably one of my favorites is the demystifying networking. A lot of times, you know, that's why we usually try to start this presentation with what is networking and really giving you kind of that brief overview of its purpose its, and its benefit, just so then you can see that it is something that people are doing to get ahead and to really help to advance their own career. Now under our opportunities tab, this is where there's kind of two different directions that you can go into. If I were to click under this jobs and opportunities and explore jobs, this is where it's pulling the content from Connect SC as well as Handshake. What you will notice with all the different jobs as they pop up, it will then identify which resource it is being pulled from. Uh, sorry, it's taking a few extra minutes, but or seconds. Uh, but what's nice is not only is it showing you, you know, in real time what it looks like or when it's been posted, but it'll show you whether it's been a referral of someone else who's been listed on the platform. And you can then click on it to get a little bit more insight. It'll then give you a little bit more detail of how you can go about and applying. Um, so in this case, there's currently no applicants, but maybe you want to bookmark it and then see who posted that. So definitely something you can go back to, especially for those students who are maybe looking for spring interns, uh, internships, or, you know, even summer ones. This is a really great resource to check out. And then you can see any of them have been job referrals versus job posts. If you want to do a more targeted search, you can then search particularly by industry versus job type. Um, so that was the feature of our jobs and internships. For our experiential learning projects, these are really seen more as micro internships. So when you think about maybe, you know, tr a traditional internship is going to, you know, maybe between 20 to 40 hours a week for the course of the semester, a micro internship is going to be shorter in length. We're looking at probably closer to five to 15 hours a week, or maybe, you know, 20 to 30 hours total. Um, something that's much more manageable. And what's nice about these projects is they're all posted by people specifically in the Trojan Network. So there's just a couple right now, but you can see that here are some opportunities um, for someone who's posting. If you're like, okay, I'd love to learn a little bit more about this and see, it'll give you a brief overview and any qualifications and then how to go about and apply. So cancel that. 
Um, all right, and then certainly last but not least, this is our share feature. So if you're having a great experience with the Trojan Network, you wanna share it with other individuals, you can certainly refer by email, by social media link. Um, so maybe you wanna share it on you know, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, you can absolutely go ahead and do so. So that's a little bit about that. Um, hopefully that's been pretty insightful. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and stop sharing because what I want to do is just really try to reiterate what we're trying to do here. We ultimately want you to be very intentional with the Trojan Network as you build your profile because the more detail that you can provide, the greater, stronger connections you're going to make within that platform. We want to make sure that as a student, again, you can really take advantage of that matching quiz and really be able to utilize that classmate feature because that's something that you're not going to be able to have as an alum, especially in these first two weeks where people are remote and they're not necessarily someone you can run into on campus, take advantage of it. We want you to really engage with those online alums who are signed in and available because sometimes you're thinking, gosh, do I have to send an email that's, or you know, one of those messages with 50 to 150 words, or can I try to capture someone and really you know, get them when they're ready to share their insight? So think about doing that. Also want you to utilize the classmates tag. We want you to participate in those discussion board posts and really gain some additional insight through our resources because we post them because we want you to use them. These are some of our commonly most asked questions and this will hopefully help you get to that next stage and feeling more confident in speaking with alums and gaining some particular insight. And then of course, if you really like it, make sure that you share this experience through others either through email or social media. So I really do hope that you will engage with alums through this platform. I really want you to develop several professional relationships so that not only it'll give you more access to other internships or then full-time jobs as you get closer to you know, your graduation, but I really do appreciate you taking the time and joining us today. And if you have any questions, I'd be more than happy to address them at this time. So thanks again, Trojans, fight on.